Do you ever get that feeling when you've got a number of tasks ahead that it feels like an unclimbable mountain? That's how I felt about three weeks ago. Because of the cold weather we'd had, even snow earlier in the year and the amount of rain, things got delayed slightly. However, fast forward three weeks and five or six videos quick succession on YouTube. <laughs> We're nearly almost there. The only thing left for me now to do is to sort out the auto wicking system, both in the greenhouse, in the garden, and in the one on the allotment. stock of peppers that I've got to choose from and just like the onions I'll be doing a stock check on what varieties I've got. Saying that there's a lot more varieties than the add of onions but I'll pick the best of each and the surplus will go out into the borders in the greenhouse. In the meantime let's look across here there's still stuff ready to go out. The courgettes are well into flower and across here you can see my uh, cucumbers bit of cruelty there in small pots but nonetheless they'll be being potted up within the next day or two. I'm just doing a mix now ready for the wicking systems. Uh, this is a mixture between a coir and also Bathgate's multi-purpose compost. I must say it's come out quite nice and I've already set the first pot up and I've got the the clay pebbles in, if you can see, together with the wick. I decided in the end to do the cucumbers first because the fruits are getting quite big on them and really they need the more nutrients than the other plants. So, here you goes. Because I've had the cocoa coir, obviously I've halved the nutrients in there now because cocoa doesn't really have any nutrients. So what I've done, I've added a sprinkle in the Vitax Q4 just to build it back up again. just quickly show it here in the pot. I've got the clay pebbles in the bottom and now they're there really to block the holes up in the bottom. There's quite a few holes in the bottom and they'll also help wicking the water up from the reservoir below into the capillary mat as well. In the pot I've just used an old empty pot as a mould just like the usual like this. I'm pressing it down nice and firmly to give it a good formation around there then I want to lift the pot out hopefully it's left the square. I'll just go and get the plant now. As you can see, this is uh, more than ready for planting. Three nice, well, lots of fruits on there. So I'll just take this out of the pot. Good root ball on. And I must remember this time to put a bit of mycorrhizal on. Right, I've potted the first one up, it don't look too bad. I've given it a really good watering just to soak it through and get the wick wet. I'm going to store this just in the greenhouse now until I can get the base unit set up and the other three potted on. Here are the cucumbers now, four of them potted up on the greenhouse floor. I'll leave one here now until I set the base unit up. So tomorrow I think I'm going to have a look at the peppers. So this here is my pepper collection for the year and I need to pick 16 now to the best and the rest will so go into the allotment greenhouse border. I've got my crib sheet here so bear with me. So right on the end here, number 37, then with the Corno di Toro Rosso, the long red pepper, really nice. And the next one we have is uh, number 12, which is the one called Red King there, across to number 11. That is a sweet aster. Number 10, we got a beauty bell. Uh, got number 8 is a bullhorn mixed. Number 7 there is the one called paragon. Number 6 is a one called new ice. We've got a few, well, quite a few actually. Number 5 here. That one there is called Sweet Mix, so I should say that's a, quite a good variety there. And tucked around the corner there is the number four, and that there is one called Big Ben. 
So as I said, I'll pick the 16 of the best of these and the rest will be on the allotment border. You may have noticed there on the list of the peppers I did, there was no California wonder at all. I actually did two sowings and all the sowings failed, so I obviously need to get new seeds for next year. Well, it looks like we've got another glorious day in store. I'm all prepared. I've got my sun cream on. 16 pots here, the wick in. So I'll bring you back when I've got these done. Right, I've put the expanded clay pebbles in this pot and for this system in the greenhouse, the auto wicking system that I've built, I've actually put the level of the pebbles slightly higher than normal and there's two reasons for this. First of all, when I designed the system, I actually got these pots to slightly sit below the level of the plate and if the tank is full below, these could actually be in water so it stops the actual compost being flooded. And the other reason is, if I designed it different by sitting flush on here, this capillary matting will wick up, but it will flood across the top of the plate and actually start dripping off. So that's the reason I've done it. I'm just filling the tank up now, the first one, and that brick in the middle acts as a little support for the top plate, because it does bow a bit with all the weight of the pots up. And I've also added uh, five cupfuls of liquid seaweed as well as a feed. Before I put the first pot in I'll just show you this and this is what I was on about putting the extra depth of the clay pebbles in. As you can see the water level is quite close to the top of the plate and the pot will actually fit into there and go down around about 20-25 millimetres so that then prevents the soil from getting waterlogged and that will just be the clay pebbles in there. As you can see, these courgettes are raring to go out. I was going to plant them in the middle bed, but I've not prepared that yet. No problem, I can just swap the two beds over. So only two courgettes this year. <laughs> and I'm going to plant them more or less at the extreme end of the beds and give them some space. Courgettes have already got some fruits on, so won't be long before we're actually picking from them. Meanwhile, over on the other bed there, I've got some more peppers that are ready to go into the wicking system, and some little outdoor patio tomatoes there, and they're called summer last, and they are blight resistant. If you were watching a few episodes ago, you may recall that I took some cuttings from a very leggy tumbler tomato. These are the resulting cuttings. There's three in there and it's in a 16 inch hanging basket, ready to go in the garden. Oh, we've managed to get all the capsicums in place. And I'm really looking forward to see how these perform over the year. In most cases, we've doubled up on some plants, three in some cases. The 16 in total, and I'll be putting a list of what varieties we've got at the bottom. This hole at the front here you can see. That there is the filling hole, just for topping the tank up. And what I do, I've got a scouring sponge. Just put that in there and it helps reduce any evaporation through the hole. Well, I was still having some cold nights. In fact, last night we had five degrees. I've decided now I'm going to put out the dwarf French beans and these ones are called Ferrari. That's the beans in position, 23 in total. I have put a few slug pellets down, we really need to on here, we are devastated by slugs. But again, there's no need to plaster it and make it a sea of pellets, just the odd ones here and there, there's enough to keep them at bay. Just to show you what I've been doing here, these are a few lettuce that I've potted on, a mixture of Webb's Wonderful and Little Gem. And over to here, these are variety of kohlrabi, I think there's different, three different types and I've got these inside the onion cage just to give them a bit of protection and also some fresh air. We're on the home straight now hopefully and I'm just sorting out the auto watering in the allotment greenhouse. Whilst this is the uh, 
auto pots. I've got eight of these and there's two sets of quad grows. With any watering system, particularly where you've got pipes, and in this case there's valves, you do really need to make sure everything's really clean, otherwise blockages can cause the whole system to fail. With these aqua valves also, there's little rubber sealing valves there, which helps work on the flood and drain system. Unique design and they're very, very good, but as I say, do make sure there's no dirt in there, otherwise it'll fail. It's been quite a busy but very enjoyable day. Amazing how much time it's taken to give this. Well, these systems are good washing, and I've not fully commissioned them yet. What I've done is filled the reservoirs, or probably two thirds full, with the house pipe, and I'm just going to leave it 24 hours for the nasties to evaporate out of there. And also on the quad growers, we did have a, a pipe linking the two units there, but what I've done is taken that out mainly because the filters have disintegrated and I've actually blanked the holes off so they're now two standalone units and as if by magic the plants are in position <laughs> well almost there's still two pots empty there they're gonna house the sweet million tomatoes still need growing on a little bit so another couple of weeks and they should be in all the plants are in this side and all that's left now for me to do is to add a bit of food into the reservoirs. I use this at the moment, maxi crop. Two cup pulls in each reservoir, put it in, blast the house pipe in to give it a good mix. Normally I use Nutrimate on here, but the company what Medquad Grow went out of business. However, Steve over in Digwell Greenfingers has found another company what's supplying the kit and also the nutrients. So if you want to find out more, nip over to his channel and have a look. One more thing, if you're wondering what this is, this is a blood fishing bone I've just put on the borders. I'll give that another wash in and uh, that's going to be to feed the soil because we've got an awful lot of capsicums to go in and that'll be in the next episode. During the last few days I've been made aware of a cat wandering around the allotment, obviously in a little bit of distress. Although she's got a collar on, we can't get nowhere near her, she's very, very timid. We're under the impression that she's recently given birth to kittens and somehow lost them and she walks around the allotment all day giving off this terrible cry. We've been feeding her, I've been putting out cat food, water and milk which she takes from a distance but you cannot get anywhere near her to try and trace down the owner or see if she's chipped. We'll keep on feeding her and see if she managed to build herself up and carry on her way. Sometimes nature can be ever so cruel. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye for now.